If you have your Bibles with me, turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We are walking through the book of Romans, verse by verse. And uh, we are excited about the Scripture that we have. And uh, we hope it will mean something to you. Let me go ahead and give you the outline. Uh, I'm talking today about death and life. Death and life. And uh, this has to deal with salvation. Okay, it's all about salvation is what we are talking about today. Number one, there's death in Adam. There's death in Adam. Because Adam sinned, death came into the world. The second thing is there is life in Jesus Christ. And folks, uh, Jesus Himself said, I come to, have, to give you life. And He is talking about abundant life. And we praise the Lord for that. And then number three, there is God's amazing grace. Folks, His grace is amazing. He loves us in spite of ourselves sometimes. And uh, even the Apostle Paul, uh, who wrote the book of Romans, uh, called himself the chiefest of sinners. And uh, we will look at that at the end of the sermon. You know, our scripture text, in our scripture text, the Apostle Paul shows a contrast between Adam and Jesus. It also lays the foundation for an obvious truth that we must all deal with death. No truth is more self-evident than the truth that all men will die unless the rapture of the church happens first. The reality of death touches all mankind without exception. But the great news is God has a plan uh, God has a plan that will conquer the fear of death. That plan is sending His only begotten Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus' death and resurrection bought, brought righteousness and justification to mankind. Praise God, even in Adam's disobedience, even though sin came into the world, because of Jesus' obedience, eternal life is possible by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart and making Him Lord of your life. Let's look at this awesome text, which is truly filled with hope and with peace. Number one, there is death in Adam. Romans 5, verse 12, therefore, and you see that, and always when you see therefore, he is referring to what we just uh, read. And then last week, uh, you remember, we sh shared with you the blessings of salvation. There was four blessings of salvation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all had sinned. And of course, the one man he is speaking of is Adam. And everybody knows the story of Adam. All right, God created him, and he created Eve. It was the first man and woman, and really all of humanity. Uh, he is the first man and woman, the first couple uh, that had children. And he put them into a perfect place. It was a utopia. It was called the Garden of Eden. And there was, it was just, I mean, when you think of uh, pristine, when you think of uh, no pain, you, when you think of uh, the most beautiful place in the world, it would have been the Garden of Eden. But there was two trees in the garden, and one particular tree, God said, do not eat of this tree. You have to realize, folks, there was only one rule. You would think mankind could keep one rule. But you know the story. The story is they did, he was, or she was tempted first uh, by Satan. And it, that was the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? And he lied to Eve. He, he brought them in, uh, in this temptation. He was subtle about what he said. And uh, even Satan said, you will be like God, which was a lie. And folks, I'm telling you, Satan is a liar. He lies. And the Word of God tells us that the fall of man happened. And everything changed when they took a bite of that apple. Everything changed. Matter of fact, hold your finger there and go to Genesis 3 with me. Genesis 3, verse 17. And this was, 
This was after the fall. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, and these, these are the consequences of sin. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toll you shall eat of it. We can thank Adam for having to work in sweating. Okay, you can thank Adam for that. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth. Even as beautiful as roses are, I'm telling you, those thorns hurt when you, when you uh, put your finger on them. And you shall eat of the herb of the field, and in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. So Adam in his fall brought death on all of mankind. All of mankind. And it says, for out of it you were taken, and dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And I know what some people say, well, why am I paying for Adam's sin? Well, let me give you a little hint here today. If you were there, you'd have done the same thing. Okay, why? Because of mankind, the curiosity of man. And you have to also understand, the law had not been written yet. From Adam to Moses was 2,500 years. So they were trying to figure things out. And again, one rule kind of reminds me of teenagers, doesn't it, you? You give them one thing to do, you tell them one thing, they find where the line is and hope you're not looking. Folks, we'd have done the same thing. We really would have. Now, look back in our text in verse 13. For until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law, and that's what I was talking about. Again, they, they were not as aware of sin, but they knew something was wrong before the law came in. And we know why the law was given. The law was given so that we would know when we sin. And they had a conscience Okay, but as far as the law, uh, they did not have that insight that we have. And folks, you have to understand, starting from the beginning, and, and it went from Abram to Abraham, the key to salvation is the Old Testament, is faith in a coming Messiah. So they still could be saved, but they were not as aware of the law as we are today. Verse 14, nevertheless... Death reigned from Adam to Moses. People died. Matter of fact, I think uh, Adam was like 931 years old. Okay, now that's getting up there, folks, all right? But he died. Nobody lives on earth forever. Even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Folks, Adam's sin brought judgment and condemnation to mankind. And people died before the law. Man had a sin nature before the law. And when it comes down to it, we would have done the same thing. Matter of fact, Romans 3.23, we have already covered this. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then Romans 6.23 Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. If you have sinned one time, and folks, we have sinned way more than one time. It, it, the wages of sin is death, but here's the good news, okay? The gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. One man brought death into the world. One man brought eternal life into the world. So you see the contrast there. And folks, everyone will die. I understand that. But you have to understand God made a way for people to be saved. And we are going to talk about that in just a second. So we see there is death in Adam. But I also want you to see that there is life in Jesus Christ. This is the good stuff, folks. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace of the one man, notice the capital M, that is deity, 
All right, he is talking about Jesus Christ, abound to many. So we see the good news, folks. You don't have to die in your sin. We all have to die. Everyone will face death. But we don't have to die into our sin. We don't have to die and be apart from Jesus Christ. Why? Because of a gift. Folks, in that gift is Jesus Christ. The greatest day, the greatest birth that ever took place We celebrated at Christmas when Jesus, who was born of a virgin, came into this world, and his whole purpose was to save mankind. So we see the negative part of death, but folks, you have to see the positive part of life. And I will tell you, when you talk about gifts, and I've gotten some pretty good gifts, folks. I've gotten some good gifts. Matter of fact, most of what I have on today was a gift at Christmas. Don't I look stylish? Don't you like that? Well, I do. But the greatest gift ever given was Jesus Christ our Lord. I know you, you're thinking, man, what about money? What, if, what about that gift of money? You know you're going to spend it. You know you're not going to keep that. The greatest gift is Jesus Christ. Now look at this again. The free gift. The free gift. Even man's offense, offense, even Adam messed things up. Now notice this word three times in Scripture. He says, much more the grace of God. My question today, I want to ask you, How much grace do you need today? How much grace? I don't know about you, but there's times I need a lot of grace. I need a lot of grace. And what he is saying is, even though we are sinners by nature, even though Adam's sin and the curse of death is on us, we live in a time of grace. We live in a time of grace. We are there historically. And that grace, folks... It's like knowing the truth. The truth can set you free. Knowing Jesus Christ and accepting that perfect gift is the most amazing grace there is. And he uses this word, much more. Folks, salvation is not just praying a sinner's prayer. Folks, I'm telling you, you you go from death to life. God quickens you. He saves you. He forgives you of your sins. And we are living the abundant life in Jesus Christ. That's why he's saying there is life in Jesus. And we know even we we are just weeks away from Easter. And because, yes, Jesus himself died on the cross. Yes, he was buried and laid in a tomb. But glory to God, he arose, and three days later, he showed victory over death. The Bible says in verse 16, And the gift is not like that which came through one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Folks, I don't care how bad you have been. I don't care your past. I don't, it doesn't matter how many people you've hurt. It doesn't matter what you have done before. I am telling you, God's grace will forgive you of all of your sins. The Bible says he erases them as far as the east is from the west. He does. And even if if there was a board behind me and it took up the whole stage, I'm pretty sure my sins would not fit on that board, okay? I mean, I've got 63 years of sin and going, okay? But you know what He does at salvation? He takes that eraser and He erases every sin you've ever committed. Folks, that is God's amazing grace. Though Adam messed things up, Jesus Christ makes things right. He makes them right. In verse 17, 
or, or excuse me, uh, the rest of verse 17. Uh, For by one man's offense to death reign, one much more, those who receive abundance, great, abundance of grace. That means all you need, he is God, and the gift of righteousness, not just grace, but we get God's righteousness. We get Jesus' righteousness. And when we, ha- when we invite Christ into our life, the Holy Spirit comes into our life. He cleanses us. Okay, He puts a crown on our head. He puts a ring on our finger. And we have the righteousness in Christ. Uh, the gift of righteousness will reign in the life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as though one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one's man, one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. It's almost redundant here, but why do you put, uh, you know, why do you say things more than once or even two or three times? So people will remember this, okay? Again, we all have to die once. Nobody lives on earth forever unless, uh, you know, we go through the rapture of the church. And by the way, I would not be surprised. I'm not predicting anything, but I'm simply saying I believe the rapture of the church could happen in 2022. There are too many signs. I didn't say it will happen. I'm saying it could happen. But yet, we have to understand we have abundant life in Jesus Christ. Look at verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Folks, God put us in his family. God calls us sons and daughters. God forgives us of our sins. God places the Holy Spirit inside of us. I hope you understand the privileges you have as being a Christian. You have access to God 24-7, 365 days of the year. You have the Word of God. God's instruction book. You have God Himself who created everything as your Lord and Savior. You have Jesus Christ as your role model and your example. I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say, folks. It's not just one of those, yeah, I got saved. We shouldn't have that attitude. We should shout, yes, I got saved. God changed me. I am a child of the King. Ephesians 2. Go with me to Ephesians 2. Paul really spells it out to the church at Ephesus here. Look at Ephesians 2.1. And you he made alive. Folks, you are alive. You don't have to fear death. You are alive who were dead in trespasses in sins, in which you once walked according to the course of of this world. And folks, I got news for you. Most people, they weren't looking for God. God came looking for them. You were dead in your sins. You were not thinking about God. You were not thinking about eternity. You'd be surprised of how many people don't think about eternity. That, That, you know, what happens, you know, when you pass from this life? I was witnessing to a man in Lawton, Oklahoma, and I'll never forget what he said. I asked him, if you were to die uh, 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 today, would you go to heaven? He says, no, I don't know. I just don't know. And then uh, I asked him, I, I kept quizzing him and asking about his spiritual condition, and he, he just kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. And then finally, after I talked to him for two, three, four minutes, he said, truly what I believe, that if you're dead, you're just dead. You just die. Nothing happens. Okay, when your life is done, it's, it's done. And I tried my best to convince him that there is a, a life after death. I shared Scripture with him, but he did not get it. He simply said, you know, I really don't believe that. And my heart was just broken that day. 
for this young man. It says, once walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air. Okay, that is Satan, folks. That is Satan. We, and, and I know people say, well, I wasn't following Satan. Well, folks, you had not, if you had not accepted Christ, he, is, he was definitely influencing you. And he is the prince and the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom we have all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we, by nature, were children of wrath, just as others. What is he saying? Before we got saved, folks, we were lost. We didn't acknowledge God for who he was. We didn't go looking for God. We did what we wanted to do. And just, just I heard, just, I, I guess this morning somebody told me, and I didn't even know this happened. Some Down in Dumas, somebody went to a car show and just started shooting people. Now, who do you think influenced that, folks? I'll tell you who it was. It was Satan. He is real, folks. Think of the war that Ukraine's in now. Who do you think? is behind that war. I'm telling you, Satan is, folks. Satan is all around. That's why it is so important that people see Jesus in us so that we can share the good news of salvation with others. And I'll tell you right now, folks, the only hope this world has is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus. These folks need Jesus. They need a good dose of Jesus. Look at verse 4. But God. Don't you like that? Don't you like those two words? I mean, you were doomed. You were following Satan. You were in the flesh. You were doing what you want to do. But God changed everything. Who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. When you got saved, I'm telling you, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When you got saved, all your sins were forgiven. When you got saved... Folks, your, your soul is going to heaven. Matter of fact, I like to put it this way. When I think of heaven, I'm already there. You say, no, you're not. You're preaching. Oh, folks, no matter what happens to me, no matter what happens in my life, I'm already there. It's called security of the believer. In verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show his exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Folks, everyone that can hear my message today, I'm telling you, there is an invitation today. God is telling you, you know what? You can be saved today. You can ask for forgiveness of your sins today. You can know that when you die, you go to heaven today if you will put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Look at verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. It's not of works. It's not of the law. That Paul drives that home all through the book of Romans. You can't be good enough. You can't clean up enough. You can't work enough. You can't follow the rules. We've already broken the rules. That's what he's saying. For by grace you have been saved. Here's the key. Through faith, not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And folks, I'm telling you, if, if it was like you were uh, in a boat and a storm came and you didn't have your life jacket on and your boat capsized, I'm telling you, and threw you into the water and it just kept going further and further and further away from you, Folks, that's what we do. That's, that's what our lost condition is, folks. We are drowning in the lake of sin, and we need Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. So we see there's death in Adam. There is life in Jesus Christ. And number three, there is God's amazing grace. Look back in Romans Looking back at Romans 5, verse 20. 
Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. And remember, the law doesn't save you. It's saying when we got the law, when Moses wrote, wrote the law down, we could see the righteousness of God. We could see the perfection of God. We could see the rules that God wanted us to go by. Okay, it was a plumb line. God's law convicts us of sin. I mean, you really don't have to tell somebody you shouldn't murder somebody. Surely we could figure that one out. Okay? But it says you shouldn't commit adultery either. But here's one that we do a lot of, folks. Thou shalt not bear false witness. So we are breaking God's law when we lie. And the reason the law was, what was there is how we know this is what we should not do. And when we do what is wrong, shame and guilt should come upon us. It should. And that's what he is saying here. He's saying we have offended God when we sin. But sometimes people just say, well, I'm not that bad a sinner. And I'm thinking, not that bad? Who are you comparing yourself to? Okay, how bad are you? Folks, I know I was a sinner before I got saved, but I don't want to be a sinner now. I want to be saved. I, uh, again, you know, not that you can earn that, but that people can see that Christ made a difference in my life. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, creature, creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Look at the rest of that verse. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Even as Christians, we're going to sin, folks. But God tells us when we feel that sin, when we feel that burden, when we feel that guilt, we can go to God and we can sincerely repent of our sins and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Folks, I do not go a day without confessing my sin to God. Remember what sin is, folks. He that knoweth that doeth good and doeth it not, that is sin. James tells us that. It's not just the big ten, you know, the big ten commandments. We know when we sin. And when we sin, conviction should come into our lives. And we should not be able to make peace with that sin and when you feel that conviction and you feel that guilt and you feel that shame, that's when it's time to repent. Hey, think of Adam. What did he do when God caught him? He was hiding in the bushes. What did he do? He covered himself. He made him a covering and, and God called his hand out. God says, uh, hey, uh, how do you know you're naked? Okay, God does the same thing with us through the Holy Spirit. And instead of ignoring that, we need to respond by repentance and accept the grace that God gives us in our lives. How much grace you need? Grace abounded much more. Look at verse 21. So that as sin reigned in death, even so gra grace might reign through uh, righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, I could not live another day without the grace of God in my life. His grace is amazing. His grace is amazing. His mercy is wonderful. And folks, we as Christians, we need to understand 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Every night, every night, every night, every night, when I am alone, I mean, Lori and I, we have finished talking. I am, uh, my eyes could even be closed, but I ask myself three questions. Number one, am I right with God? Am I right with God? Have I done everything God wanted me to do today? Have I slipped? Have I messed up? Did I say something? Do I have an attitude? Am I right with God? The second thing is, am I right with my family? Am I right with my family? Flesh and blood, folks, and even church family. And am I right with my fellow man? 
And if I can check the boxes, yes, yes, and yes, I had a pretty good day, folks. A pretty good day. But if just one of those answers are no, that's where God's grace comes in. And I like to put it this way. God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. God, I was wrong. I say those three things, and I ask God to forgive me of my sins, and His grace covers me. That's how, when we lay our head on our pillows at night, folks, we can just put our head on our pillows and say, God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, and go to sleep. Matter of fact, folks, I have no trouble falling asleep. I get in trouble for falling asleep. Laura and I will be talking. She said, next day, you've done it again. I said, what? She said, it wasn't two minutes. We were talking. I was asking you about our vacation. And I said, honey, I know you got it under control. I'm not sweating all right? I'm just your ride and I'm your pocketbook is what I am, all right? She said, two minutes, Mike, two minutes. You can't stay awake for me, all right? And it's not that I don't want to hear her, her talk. It's simply as, man, I put in a day, and again, I'm not perfect. I'm not even close to perfect. But folks, I'm just telling you as we close, there is nothing better than being right with God. Just being right with God. Not perfect. Forgiven. Being forgiven. Matter of fact, Paul says this. 1 Corinthians, and I close with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Folks, he was there. Stephen's clothes were thrown at his feet when Stephen was stoned to death. I don't think that's on your background. I don't think that's been on you. But even if it had, God forgave Saul. God forgave him. God put the Holy Spirit in his life, and it made such a huge difference. He was a changed man. And look what it says. But, verse 10, by the grace of God, I am, I am what I am. All right, and Paul, you know, there were folks that didn't like him. The Jewish folks especially didn't like him. He told the truth. He told it in love, but he simply preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was his whole life after he got saved, was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his grace toward me was not in vain. He didn't waste his time on me. He didn't. He's not being uh, you know, bold. He's not being uh, you know, vain in all this. He simply say, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which is in me. He understood God's grace, and he thanked God for saving his soul. Verse 11, Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Folks, your life is a testimony. People are looking at you every day. People are going to see how you react to things. They're going to see how you, how you speak, how you walk. They're going to see what you do and the attitude that you have. And when people say this, why didn't you get mad at them? Why didn't you get even with them? Why are you even speaking to those people? You can say, because of the grace of God, I am what I am. And it could go right into a salvation conversation, folks. We are saved by grace. We are saved by grace. And if you're here today, and if you've never put your faith and trust in, in Christ, you realize that you can go from death into life. Oh, we're all going to die. Everybody here, 100%, if you live long enough, you are going to die. But we don't have to die that second death. We have the privilege of salvation and God's grace in our lives. Father, thank you for the day.
God, thank You so much for Your grace. God, I thank You for that phrase three times, much more. God, You give us much more than we deserve. You give us abundant life. You give us eternal life. You give us just everything, heaven, this life and heaven too. So God, my prayer today is if there's one here that doesn't know you, that today would be their day of salvation. God, I pray they wouldn't wait. I pray that as soon as we stand up, they'll come down and simply say, I want to be saved today. I want to put my faith and trust in Christ. I want to know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. Not a hope so, but a no so. Then God, I pray for Christians. God, we have a huge responsibility to others. God, I pray that we would be more like you. I pray that we'd be more like Jesus. And God, when we are convicted of sin, I pray we don't pass on that. God, I pray that we would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Maybe someone needs to come forward for rededication today or for baptism today or even move their church letter or, or membership of this church. God, I just pray that you'd speak to them. Just speak to these folks through the Holy Spirit. And God, we'll be careful to give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?